Hello and welcome to this edition of Quality of Life. I'm your host, Dave Augustine. I'm really excited about the next coming episodes because this is first in a four-part series where we'll be going on the journey of well-being. Taking us on this journey through the four episodes is well-known hypnotist, psychic, author, and healer uh, by means of Reiki, Tony Green. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Um, this show, we're going to focus on hypnosis. Absolutely. So we know you're a certified hypnotist. How does one become a certified hypnotist? Um, typically through a training program, you want to find an accredited school or an mm -hmm. accredited program that offers hypnosis. Okay. I went to the Janesville uh, school, mm -hmm. uh, the Hypnosis and Wellness Center in Janesville. Okay. Yeah. How long did it take you to go through to get your license or accreditation? It was um, approximately, I want to say, a three-month program, just the weekends, though. Okay. Okay. Nice. So hypnosis, uh, what is it, I guess, you know, where you see on TV once in a while, you know, in the movies or whatever, they wave their hands or whatever, or they have the pendant going. Is it really that's what it's about, or I guess what is it to be hypnotized? Okay, so yeah, some some hypnotists actually still use items to help a person become hypnotized. I have some tools that I use, um, not a pendulum, however. I have a CD that helps to put you right in that state of um, hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And I also use a product called the Biomat that helps you relax and go into that deep state of relaxation. And that's basically what hypnosis is. It's a very focused state of relaxation. So as a person becomes more and more relaxed, the subconscious part of their mind is more open to suggestions. Okay. Do, can anybody be hypnotized or is there different levels or you know, the depths of hypnosis one can go into? Is it you know, based on how somebody's mind is trained, if they're real analytical or you know, that way? Um, that's a really good question. Actually, I personally have not met anybody that could not be hypnotized. To statistically, they say people who are extremely analytical or with a lower IQ cannot be hypnotized. Now, I believe we're all in hypnosis at least once a day. That time when we're zoned out during the day, we can hear everything going on around us, but we're kind of zoned out in our own little world. That's a, a state of hypnosis. We've heard of highway hypnosis mm -hmm. where you're driving down the street and you don't know how you got home. That's a state of hypnosis also. The first time somebody comes in for a hypnosis session, they'll go into a certain depth of relaxation. The more you use hypnosis, the deeper you can relax. One of the processes that I use for hypnosis, we start the person off at a very light state mm -hmm. of hypnosis. As the session goes on, they get deeper and deeper and deeper into that state of hypnosis, which is a progressive, um, progressive relaxation hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can hypnosis be used in, instead of, let's say, today everything is, you know, pharmaceutical based to help heal or to cure things? You know, you got a prescription for this, prescription for that. Can hypnosis be used as an alternative way to help people heal themselves? Absolutely. Stress is an indicator in almost every illness and disease. If we can bring our stress levels down, we can, I can't say everybody could, but the amount of medications mm -hmm. that are being prescribed to people would probably be a lot less. Anxiety and fear. So many people that take their children or as adults go to doctors for anxiety and fear, mm -hmm. they're just right away here, take this pill, take this, get this prescription where hypnosis can help eliminate what's causing that anxiety and remove it from you. So you don't need that medication. Our body forgets how to relax. When we're babies, we can be folded up in a little ball practically. But as we get older, we have stress, we have concerns, we have worries. And all of a sudden, even at night when we go to sleep, we're not even going into full sleep any longer. But the more you re teach your body to relax, the less medications you'll need, the less illnesses and diseases that you'll have. 
interesting. With the age of somebody, can children be hypnotized, or is it more in adults where you're more susceptible to it, or not no. susceptible where you react to hypnosis, yeah. I should say? That's a great question. Absolutely, children can be hypnotized. I'm, um, I went to the James Bell Hypnosis and Wellness um, Center for my original certification, but I did my continuing education with Martin and Johnson, and I did that in pediatric, which is teen, preteen, and children okay. hypnosis, uh, sales, and motivation. Um, oh, athletics and fitness, and then stage hypnosis. And no, I don't want to be a stage hypnotist. Um, but children, I've hypnotized children as young as five, okay. and then all the way into teens. And they're amazing with hypnosis. They handle uh, hypnosis much better. Their results can be much stronger. They aren't carrying as much as a lot of the adults around. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to get in there, um, help them heal whatever's causing their issues and then move on. Okay. One thing with medications, you know, as we were talking about earlier, is some people can't take medications or it doesn't, they don't react to the medications. Case in point, say, let's say if somebody had a stroke, you know, and a lot of it is based on the brain and whatever, so it may not, the medications may not work. Could hypnosis, you know, help relieve or help, you know, people, you know, recover from that? Absolutely. Um, two quick examples here. Uh, the gentleman from Martin and Johnson, who has been a hypnotist forever, actually did have a stroke, and they told him he would never walk again. Well, he said, I'm a hypnotist. I will. And he mm -hmm. does, and he's still out there training, doing training sessions and with the NGH, and completely has, has rehabilitated a great deal from his very severe stroke. Mm -hmm. I actually had an accident where my head had hit the cement and I smelled burning toast and I knew there had been some, some damage there. Mm -hmm. um, and I used hypnosis to start the healing processes in my brain basically. And it was, okay. it was the greatest thing. I don't get to share this story much and uh, you have to have a level of belief to understand this, but I, I started uh, doing the hypnosis and I said, okay, let's heal the prefrontal cortex. Let's heal the right lobe, the left lobe. And as I'm doing this, I'm literally giggling because my left, I was working on the right side and my left arm just floated up. And really? I, I just, yeah. And then my like right leg when I was working on, and I was just cracking up. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is really, something's going on here. Not to mention the fact that I could feel it. Mm -hmm. I could like feel this tingling in my head. Now I've had clients come to me since then that have had uh, head injuries or they've had something uh, that is their maturity isn't as developed as they would like it to be. And I will add that into their session. And it's always remarkable because their hands or their arm will start moving. They're like, this is crazy. I'm like, crazy good. Nice. <laughs> so yeah. So I probably answered my next question coming up. Is there such a thing as self-hypnosis? And then yeah. with self-hypnosis, then you hear about meditation. Is there a difference or is meditation actually another way of putting yourself into a hypnotic state? Absolutely. So it goes, first, let me, uh, the meditation to sure. hypnosis. We're awake. Then we have light meditation, meditation, deep meditation, light hypnosis, hypnosis, deep hypnosis, sleep. Now, this is the reason, part of the reason why people, they say don't go to bed angry and don't go to bed, bed fighting with somebody. Because if you're thinking about that while you're going to sleep, you're literally program, programming that into your mind, along with worries and negative thought processes. Mm -hmm. So when you, before you get in bed, if you have a habit of running through the day and uh, while you're in bed, write it down, ball it up, throw it away, and then get in the bed because you need to get those thoughts out. Just don't do it in bed as you're falling asleep because you are in some state of programming. Now, yes, self-hypnosis is a very powerful, powerful tool. I use self-hypnosis almost um, every night. And I, part of the reason I became a hypnotist were some of the things that had happened earlier on for me in, in my childhood that I wanted to also recover from. 
And once I started doing self-hypnosis, I it helped me to become very aware of what my clients would be going through. So it was an incredible tool both ways. Just like you went to school to get your certification for hypnosis, <coughs> excuse me. If someone wants to learn self-hypnosis, would they have to go through the same kind of program or the same type of uh, mentoring or whatever to be able to do it? Um, I would suggest mentoring. If they've never had an experience with hypnosis, I would strongly suggest mentoring because you want to know that once you're in, the sta in that state of hypnosis, the appropriate suggestions and or things that you want to say. You don't want to get in that state of hypnosis and then start second guessing yourself and mm -hmm. saying things that you wouldn't want to be programmed for. So I strongly recommend getting mentoring from a hypnotist that knows how to teach self-hypnosis. Okay. Um, on this show, obviously, we're not going to do an actual hypnosis. However, I did go through yeah. previously with a hypnosis session with Tony where I actually was hypnotized. So what I'd like to do is talk about that now in this interview program, the stages that one goes through, if we could do that. Absolutely. So um, when you came in for the hypnosis, we started at a light state of hypnosis. And then as the hypnosis went on, it went deeper and deeper. And I'm sure that you can um, tell everybody that in the beginning, it was a feeling of maybe not being uh, not even sure you were in hypnosis, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of like, am I, am I not? Yep. Exactly, and that's what I went through. Is like I was laying there and I was aware of everything going on. You know, I'm like, I'm not hypnotized, you know, but yet my eyes started to flap, like in REM sleep. My eyelids were blinking. I'm going, is this normal or what? Because I'm trying to make them stop and they just kept blinking. So that's where I experienced that. And then I started to, as we progressed, I started to tingle a little bit more, like you had mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's, and that's, those are two perfectly normal experiences for people. Not everybody has the same experience, mm -hmm. but those are two perfectly normal experiences for people during hypnosis. One of my signs that somebody's starting to go into hypnosis is the rapid eye movement. As soon as I see that, I'm like, awesome. We can really get started now. We can really start going into the depths of this. The second thing is um, if they, it's called the deep deep swallow where you're swallowing and it's like a because your throat is so relaxed right. it looks like a really emphasized swallow so those are two of the signs but th those are perfectly normal um, experiences during hypnosis okay. I don't remember I think I was but in my hypnosis session was I swallowing as well I you know once I see the rapid eye movement I don't need to yeah. look for anything else okay because I could have swore I was also, you know, yeah. swallowing, like not dry mouth, but continuously swallowing, you know. And what's weird is all the while I'm still, I could hear your voice and I knew where I was. So I wasn't sure if I was hypnotized or what, or what was, you know, really going on other than I know as I started and you started, you know, we started going through the other steps. And by the way, I was hypnotized. We had to pick a topic as far as what to be hypnotized for, which is an important thing. You just want to say, hey, I want to be hypnotized. I mean, you want to have a reason for it, I'm assuming. And mine was, you know, focus on better eating, nutrition, you know, exercising, you know. So that's what the session was all about. Absolutely. And as you notice, in the beginning, there were um, what I like to call mind exercises that we did, clearing away things. And then as it went on, um, in, and especially in the end, it wasn't as important that you heard everything I said, but in the beginning, I want a certain amount of awareness and interaction mm -hmm. uh, with the person who's being hypnotized. And in your case, you were a perfect candidate, were able to do everything, see everything, um, and just move forward in the hypnosis that way. And then towards the end, if you didn't hear me, it's okay. And yeah. some people, they get into hypnosis, they can hear everything all the way through, that's perfectly normal. They might hear it in and out, that works still. And they may hear nothing and then they think, I didn't hear anything, I'm mm -hmm. listening to your CDs, I'm not hearing anything. And I say, don't worry, this isn't for your conscious mind, it's for your subconscious mind. That's where permanent changes take place. Once we change it in the subconscious mind, it automatically kind of uploads, 
-hmm. to the conscious mind, and those changes just happen. And do you have any examples of that that you'd like since your session that you would like to share? Well, one thing I liked was before we actually went into the hypnosis session, we kind of, you know, like you said, sat down and talked about, okay, what's our plan? Where you kind of interviewed to get to know the person, like the type of they are. Like I'm more analytical, what you said. I work with computers and everything, you know. So you went through, here's the stages we're going to go through, which was really neat, you know. Mm -hmm. And then once we started going, I know the other thing was, you know, as I didn't still know I was hypnotized yet, but then as you started going in the whole removing the toxins and, you know, kind of the negative, you know, thoughts or whatever, you know, like I said, I was tingling all over. And then all of a sudden when you said just release and flush out those toxins, it's like I went, whoa, you know, I could just feel the stuff. I could feel myself reacting to it, you know, where, you know, it was actually going on in, inside, so. Absolutely. And isn't that powerful to, to feel that and know that and to just say something really happened here? Mm -hmm. And I would love to take the credit, but it's all, it's, that was all your work. Who's ever on that table is agreeing to do the work, and that's the most important thing. Yeah. The other thing we did is then, once the toxins are so-called, you know, the bad vibes or the bad habits are gone, not gone, but we went through the steps, um, then you started the reprogramming or introducing the new healthy way. You know, could you go into how we did that? Sure. In your specific case, because you are IT, we use literal computers and computer programming on here's what we're going to remove from the system. This is now what we're going to download into the system. Also going into what do you want in your daily healthy, mm -hmm. nutritious choices and letting you make those decisions because overall we all know what the best choices are to make. We might not like all of the best choices, but we like some of them. So moving those up and making them a priority is the, the next step. Mm -hmm. And then giving the suggestions about appropriate eating habits, um, the small amounts needed, portion control, so on and so yeah. forth. I know when we were going through that phase, I took it as, you know, where we made it the computer thing, but I was actually, I know my hand was moving like I was on a mouse and I was actually clicking on levels like configuring a system where you got this, yes, no, or, you know, sliding the levels, you know, like a volume control up and down for the good things and all that. I know, and then we went, <clears throat> when you're ready, you know, click OK when I was said to you, you always ask, say OK when you're done. I remember then I was clicking on the accept button. <laughs> you know, making the changes take, believe it or not, that's, and I could still, you know, remember my hand moving like a mouse and clicking on the button and moving the screen around on the categories that, you know, you said we were going through. So that was a neat thing as well. Absolutely. And our brain is this magnificent tool that we think is just already programmed and there's no way to change it. When in actuality, our brain does what we tell it to do. It doesn't have a mind of its own. Mm -hmm. It's following our mind, our past programming, where we've been, what we've learned. It can be reprogrammed at any moment we so choose. If we choose, I was doing this, but now I want to do this. People who come in for stop smoking, one session, done. Doesn't matter how much they were smoking up until that point. If they've decided they're done smoking and they come to me for a session, I have a very good track record. I've, I think I'm at 99%. The one woman who didn't quit, um, her daughter brought her in and said, okay, mom, you're going to quit smoking right. now. And the mom was like, no, I'm not. Yeah. So obviously it's not going to work in that case. But one time and they quit smoking, they never go back to smoking again. Prior to walking in, they would believe that they couldn't do that. Walking out, they're like, I don't even want a cigarette. Right. So our brain does what we tell it to do. Right. We shouldn't be doing what our brain is telling us. That's past programming. Right. But part of this, I would say for it to be effective, number one, you have to be willing to make a change to be go with it, going into it Absolutely. positively. Because you're, like you said, like the one you had, you're not going to drag them there kicking and screaming, yeah. I'm not going to do this, and then expect you know, hypnosis to work. Absolutely. The way hypnosis works the best is if you really want the changes. Mm -hmm. If you want those changes and you go to hypnosis for it, they're going to happen. Now, here's a great story. I, have, I had a client who was on a derby team, 
and she had to work out to stay on the derby team mm -hmm. and be effective and strong. She did not want to work out. She came to me for a session to help her work out, so I made her um, a CD just for working out. I did the in-office session, and then she sent me a email six months later saying it finally kicked in. Now remember, this is somebody who didn't want to work out, right. does not like working out. Other people who want to work out that come to me, within a week, they've started some sort of program or some sort of process for working mm -hmm. out. So even if you don't want it, it can sometimes work. It will take a long time, but if you want it, it's really going right. to stick and hold for you. And, and back to my session a little bit, I know when he says, yeah. okay, now it's time to make the changes take effect. And even still my computer in mind, I'd say, okay, click on start, re or click on start, restart like a Windows computer, and I actually rebooted myself where you could kind of feel it, you know, as this wave come through, which was kind of a neat feeling. Absolutely, and you knowing a lot about computers, being an IT person, that was the best case scenario possible for you because you knew everything about that. You were actually kind of taking the reins a little bit mm -hmm. too and doing some, some things that I didn't even instruct, which makes you like a perfect candidate and just really wanting these changes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no matter if I use that analogy or a different analogy, it always gets a person to the point where they get to make that choice. I'm ready, I'm pushing the button, I'm letting this go and I'm accepting this now. Yep. I think one of the last phases was where you were talking about where you're really going in deep, and I remember you talking about that where it's more for your subconscious. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's where I really can somewhat remember where I really started to get relaxed and go down, and I was still aware what was going on, but I guess I was hearing, but I wasn't listening for lack of a better yeah. way to describe it. Yeah, I call that the zoned out video game stage. You know, you, you have children playing video games. They can hear what's going on, but they're so zoned out and don't care. Um, in this case, the third stage is the suggestions stage, mm -hmm. where I'm giving those reinforcing suggestions that are in alignment with what you want to help you reach your goals. At that point, we're not doing any more mind exercises. You're free to just relax and allow yourself to drift as deep as you possibly can. And just those suggestions go right into the subconscious part of the mind and they start to work. Now, if I threw in a suggestion that you didn't want, you would actually start to wake up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But because I'm working with what you want to achieve your goals, your subconscious part of the mind is going to take those suggestions in and start implementing them as it can. And I think that's what's important too is, <clears throat> excuse me again, having a plan as far as what you want to go through because, you know, the wrong idea could get possibly put in which might have other effects too. So that's where, you know, going into like with, you know, a patient goes to a doctor, here's your health plan, so to speak, of the exercise you're going to go through and the path we're taking. So I would imagine this as being another form of healing, you take the same thing. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. It's really important to work with what the person in front of you wants. That's the way you're going to get the most powerful results. Mm -hmm. And, you know, intrinsically, people want what's best for them all the time. Yep. Never fails. Yep. I know we got about five minutes left or so, but just the kind of the experience I had, you know, once we came out of the hypnosis, you know, I remember you saying you're getting more and more and coming out, and it was like really tingling, and all of a sudden it was just like, again, this whole weight, you know, lifted off. Wow. One thing I can say is since then I've lost about four pounds, you know, which is kind of neat. Um, I have a craving for broccoli and cauliflower, <laughs> <laughs> carrots and yogurt for whatever reason where, you know, so I can see, you know, definitely the things. And then last night for supper, for a drink, I had Diet Coke and I took some and it was like I said, Yuck. you know, it's just like I can see where the, you know, programming is already starting to kick in. Like, I think the day after, I went to McDonald's for breakfast, and I usually got hash browns and a Diet Coke, and without even thinking, I'll have hash browns and orange juice. So I started right. or orange juice, you know, the healthier things. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I never thought I could be hypnotized, but I was, and actually it is working, so. And, it, it, and you know what? The, the amazing part is our taste buds change. If you think about it, when we were infants, we were fed bananas and peas. Right. 
and then eventually we we started eating other things and then we were introduced to uh, the the toxins or yep. the, the bad foods. Bad foods. And so our taste buds changed to that and they can change back again. And that's the important thing for most people to understand. And the second thing is, yeah, not everything changes at once. You can still keep this and change this. You don't, it doesn't mean letting go of everything. I always tell people, we're gonna eat cake. Mm -hmm. but there's weddings, baptisms, birthday parties, there's cake. Don't ever, and I, I remember telling you when we were going into what I call the switchboards, where you get to decide what you want to eat more of and what you want to eat less of, is don't try to turn anything off because immediately you're gonna come out and that's the only thing you're gonna want. Mm -hmm. Be practical about it. Put it at the levels you want it. So your cravings for broccoli and cauliflower, those are actually your and levels you And I remember placing gnomes high up on my yeah, slide list exactly. and then like cake, candy, and whatever else you know, more down on the one where, you know, I still think it's okay if you have a craving to satisfy that craving, but, you know, let's say if you want a little Heath bar, it's okay to have one, but don't eat five or six or seven. Exactly. The bag shouldn't be gone by the end of the day like it would be with me in the past. So it's very important to know as long as you're making the choices, you're going to stick with them. Yeah. So, excellent. Um, do you have a contact website or something if somebody wants to learn more about hypnosis or where they could go? Absolutely, it's um, www.tonig.info. Okay. Tonyg.info. Okay. Um, we're just about ready to wrap as far as time. Do you have any other comments for the audience regarding hypnosis? Yeah, if you're going to, if you decide to become hypnotized, and I hope you do, definitely find somebody who is a specialist in the area you are looking for. Um, like PTSD, I, I specialize in PTSD with veterans and people who have childhood issues, anxiety, fear, mm -hmm. but also in athletics. Find somebody who really knows what they're doing in your area. Okay, excellent advice. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you again for being on the show, Tony. I think this was very informative, very exciting, you know, as far as this episode. Thank you, Dave, for having me here. I'm really, again, very honored yep. that you would ask me. Thank, Thank you. you. Again, this is our first in the four-part series, this one dealing with hypnosis. Our next episode is going to deal with uh, psychic and connecting with um, from above or beyond. So it'll be like what your show is, Messages from Above. So yep. I'm excited for taping that one as well. We're actually, we'll probably go through a psychic reading as well as what I'm thinking we'll have planned. Absolutely. I'm very excited about that also. Excellent. Absolutely. So this concludes our episode, or this episode of Quality of Life, um, Hypnosis and Wellbeing series. Um, if you have any questions or require any other information, you can contact us on our website at www.wscsheboygan.com. For Quality of Life, I'm Dave Augustine, and on behalf of Tony Green, we thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.